So secondary data is data previously collected for any purpose other than the one at hand. In the future, we may need data in regards to something very specific and particular that may not have been done yet. However, by looking at the secondary data that's already out there, it may help us to very quickly build up data that we can then analyze it and convert to information. So data sources can include internal corporate information. This is the information or reports that our company has been generating over the last few years. Government agencies. There are several government agencies that have information about various things. Austrade is an example of a government agency that has a lot of data as well as reports about trading internationally. Trade and industry associations, for example, ARIA. ARIA stands for Australian Recording Industry Association. They would have a lot of data as well as information about their particular industry. Commercial vendors, we are looking at potentially other businesses, whether it's our competition, whether it's our suppliers, these groups of people are rich sources of data and information. Business periodicals, for example, business magazines like BRW, which stands for Business Review Weekly, and they would have lots of interesting articles, which may give us further insights. And the last one, news, media and libraries. Basically, what we're talking about here is articles published in newspapers or books that may be in libraries. So the advantages, it does save time and money if it's on target. For example, if we needed to know about expanding into a new suburb and there has already been government agencies like Australian Bureau of Statistics who have done census data or reports about a suburb that we want to move into, or even a city that we may want to expand our business into. This could save us a lot of time and a lot of money on conducting the research ourselves. It also aids in determining the direction for primary data collection. At some point, we are going to be doing primary data collection, collecting fresh data. But if the secondary data can help us figure out where the gaps are, that makes our lives a lot easier and thereby we can save a lot of time and money in the process.
Secondary data also helps to pinpoint the kinds of people to approach. So potentially we can see who was interviewed or who was surveyed in the past to get an understanding of who we need to talk to in the future. Secondary data serves as a basis of comparison for other data as well. However, the disadvantages may not be on target with the research problem and quality and accuracy of data may pose a problem as well. Imagine we're about to conduct some research. We find an article which is absolutely perfect. The title is perfect. It's interviewed and surveyed the right group of people. They've even tried to answer the questions that we were looking to ask ourselves. However, if this article was from about 10 years ago, we got a problem. And the problem is that this data may not be accurate anymore. However, it still does give us an indication of maybe the kind of questions we should ask, as well as help us to plot the trend in terms of what was it like before, what is it like today, and therefore what it could potentially be like in the future. Not all possible users of a new product can be interviewed. Therefore, a firm must select a sample or a subset of the larger population. The population or universe must be first defined. Then it is determined if the sample must be representative of the population. If the answer is yes, a probability sample is needed. Universe is the population from which the sample will be drawn. Sample is a subset of the population. And there's a few different options we have here. Probability sampling. In probability sample, a sample in which every element in the population has a known statistical likelihood of being selected. For example, imagine you've just bought yourself a lottery ticket and every person in this lottery is only allowed to buy one ticket each. Here, every person has the exact same chance or likelihood of winning the lottery. Random sampling. Here, a sample is arranged in such a way that every element of the population has an equal chance of being selected as part of the sample. What this basically means is you divide up the entire population into smaller sections based on certain criteria such as age or gender, and then every element of the population has an equal chance of being selected as part of the sample. Non-probability sampling. 
any sample in which little or no attempt is made to get a representative cross-section of the population. If you're running short on time, this is probably not a bad way to do it. However, not ideal if you want a true representation of the population. And convenience sampling. This is a form of non-probability sample using respondents who are convenient or readily accessible to researchers. For example, interviewing fellow employees, friends, or relatives, as opposed to looking for people who are truly our customers. Now, this can work rather well if you needed to product test or test the concept or an idea, and it didn't really matter if it was in the hands of the right people, as in your customers, but you just wanted someone to see if it actually works. Like imagine you've just cooked something and it smells pretty damn good. But before you can get it out there to paying public, you might just run to your family or your friends and say, hey, try this thing that I made. Let me know what you think. At the end of the day, we choose a sample rather than the entire population from a research perspective because it would just be way, way, way too expensive as well as time consuming to interview or survey every single customer that we have or even the entire population of a given area. Major types of errors may occur. The types of errors we would consider or need to look out for is measurement error. This occurs when there is a difference between information desired and information provided. Sampling error occurs when a sample somehow does not represent the target population. Frame error arises if the sample drawn from a population differs from the target population and random error occurs when the selected sample is an imperfect representation of the overall population. An example of measurement error that occurred for the Coca-Cola company, when people being interviewed told the interviewer they liked New Coke. However, the information that the interviewer didn't obtain was that the people didn't like it as much as the original Coke. Now, if you haven't heard of the product called New Coke, there's really good reason for this. And the reason was that Coca-Cola as a company launched this new product and almost immediately, due to the sheer and utter outrage of their customers, withdrew this product and apologized to everyone and brought the original Coke back into the marketplace. So when we are coming up with not only our questionnaires, but deciding who to ask these questions to, it's really important that we try and reduce the error rate and get our sampling right.